Hello, this is Rucker Chatter, and today we're going to be looking at 2017 paleontology in review. To start, we're going to look at public perception. Feathered dinosaurs were brought to the public eye again, this time by Wizards of the Coast, who used art featuring feathered dinosaurs for their game, Magic the Gathering. However, after their most recent Jurassic World trailer, and a paper which suggested T-Rex may not have had feathers based on skin impressions, it seems as though the idea of a fluffy T-Rex is still going to be debated in 2018, both publicly and scientifically. A close relative of T-Rex very likely had scales running across its face, though. A study published in Nature looked at the very well-preserved skull of a Displadiosaurus hornery, a very closely related species to Displadiosaurus taurosus, which is better known and was named in 1970. The texture on the bones was almost identical to what we see in modern-day crocodiles, and so based on that, it would have had a very similar set of scales running across its head based on the modern-day analog. Zool, an ankylosaur, got the spotlight after being named for the demon from Ghostbusters. Zool also represents the best-preserved North American species of ankylosaur, with both the tail club and the entire skull being preserved. However, Zool was largely overshadowed by the announcement of Borealopelta, a closely related notosaur. Borealopelta has been analyzed using melanosome analysis, that is, taking an electron microscope and scanning across the skin to find fossilized pigment cells, and from this, we can learn about dinosaurs' color. The analysis showed boreal pelta was darkly countershaded, which is in contrast to what you see in modern-day species which are similarly sized, such as elephants and rhinoceros. This shows that boreal pelta and similar notosaurs needed to remain cautious in their environments under threat of predation. A further study showed that the spines and spikes on its side were likely used for interspecies competition rather than for fighting off predators. With skin impressions also intact, this is one of the greatest finds in all of paleontology, let alone 2017. Cynoceropteryx, the first feathered dinosaur found in 1995, also got an updated look this year. Melanosome analysis showed that it had a bandit-like mask across its eyes, much like a raccoon or a quadamundi. Like these species, it also had a long banded tail leading us to believe that these could be modern analogs for its behavior as a small, opportunistic predator. An African abelosaur named Chinanisaurus was also discovered, dating from about 66 million years ago. This fossil shows that the abelosaurs were not outcompeted by the larger Cartrodonosaurs and persisted until the end of the KPG extinction. Additionally, it's one of the only known species from the Varian Cretaceous in Africa. Velociraptor, a dromaeosaur related to Velociraptor and Anonychus was also formally described this year. However, unlike the other two species which were adapted for lives on land, Hallscrafter seems specially adapted for an aquatic lifestyle. Adapted to water, with a wide mouth and short flipper-like arms, Hallscrafter was a duck-sized predator of ancient Mongolia and likely filled a similar niche to our present-day waterfowl. With broader dinosaur families, there is a suggestion that the traditional idea we've had of their sorting may not be correct. This may reverse what we once thought with Orniskians being their own group whereas now they may be grouped with theropoda, making sauropods the outlier. However, this has yet to be seen and is still up for debate. A fossilized tick was found holding onto a dinosaur feather which had gotten stuck in amber. So that's gonna lead to nothing. Despite what Jurassic Park might tell you, DNA doesn't last that long. and At best, we might find a few proteins. And even if those proteins are found, their only use would be to say there was DNA here once. And even if we get that, it's going to be so hard to tell whether those proteins came from the tick, the dinosaur, or even just contamination, as has happened before in other experiments with amber. A piece of Burmese amber turned up with almost an entire bird captured inside of it. The currently unnamed species belong to the Eanorthenes rather than the Neothenes, which would lead to our modern birds. Through this, scientists hope to understand why only some of the birds were able to actually survive the KPG extinction 66 million years ago. A study showed that some dinosaurs, such as Protoceratops, may have taken as long as six months to finish incubating their eggs. And this is in contrast to what we see in modern species of bird, where they have much shorter incubation times. And this just shows potential reasons that the non-avian dinosaurs may have gone extinct at the end of the Cretaceous. A 58 million year old bird was also discovered with preserved uropygeal glands. In modern birds, these glands help to maintain feathers by producing waxes and oils that help to protect the feathers from the elements. Now, some modern species, such as ostriches and woodpeckers, don't actually have these glands, and so this find helps to determine the propagation and spread of different species after the extinction at the end of the Cretaceous. In amphibians, a study of South American horned frogs led to estimations that the late Cretaceous Bezel bufo aminga, one of the largest frogs known, could bite with a force between 500 and 2,200 newtons, 
So somewhere between a domestic dog and a lion. All this from a body about 16 inches long. The first ichthyosaur was found in India this year as well. In addition to being the first from India, it's also one of the southernmost ichthyosaurs ever found. With its discovery, scientists are hoping to learn about the propagation of aquatic species throughout the Mesozoic. A study of Permian tree rings has shown evidence of an 11-year sun cycle. Now, we still see this cycle today, with solar radiation, solar flares, and sunspots all moving in an 11-year cycle. According to NASA, the 25th Human Observed Cycle is expected to peak in 2022. However, the discovery of this in Permian trees also leads us to understand more how the sun influenced life throughout all of history. Ecolostomus was voted as the top open source fossil by the Plus Paleo community in 2017. The fish is the earliest known of the Allosomidae fish, a group containing many species alive today. This armored species helps to show the evolution of many other species, as its descendants do not have the hard bony scales that it has, but close relatives to the family, such as seahorses, maintain. Over 200 pterosaur eggs were found in China this year, all coming from a single site. The find lends credence to the idea that communal roostings and rookeries were used by pterosaurs, as are used in modern-day seabirds. As the find was only announced on December 1st, 2017, it's important to look towards 2018 to find out more information about this find. Similarly, a find was announced on December 31st of 2017 of well-preserved dinosaur eggs also coming from China. Now the eggs seem similar to already well-known oviraptor eggs, and we should expect more from this find in 2018 as well. Some researchers have suggested that the Astarchids, who have previously only been found in a few spots around the world, might be able to fly globally. This year there was more support for that, as three new species seem to have been unearthed. Argentina Draco from Argentina, an unnamed species which was unearthed in Mongolia, and a pelvic girdle which has been tentatively assigned to Astarchidae. And so it seems to be that these species could fly globally. Ancestor to mammals, Leistrosaurus was shown to be a burrower this year as well, after fossils of Leistrosaurus were found inside of a fossilized burrow in South Africa's Karoo Basin. While it had often been theorized that it had burrowed and that helped it to survive the Permian extinction, which killed between 85 and 90% of life on Earth, it's the first time we have substantial evidence that that is how mammal ancestors survived the extinction. According to a paper in Nature, humans, rather than climate change, killed off the megafauna of ancient Australia, which is shocking, I know, that humans are making things go extinct. The paper specifically looked at fossilized fungus from a core sample that they had. Now this fungus is often found in the dung of large herbivores, and they saw the largest decrease in that fungus between 45,000 and 43.1 thousand years ago, which coincides with human settlement and colonization of Australia rather than with major climate change. Finally, we have a study on the Siberian Traps, a series of volcanoes thousands of kilometers wide which erupted around 260 million years ago. The study suggests that volcanic traps such as the Siberian Traps could have led to volatile extinction events such as the one at the Permian-Triassic boundary also 260 million years ago. The study also notes that the Deccan Traps from India, which were erupting 66 million years ago near the end of the dinosaur's reign, would not have been able to provide for that extinction, as it did not provide enough lava to sustain such an extinction. This shifts the burden of evidence to the Chicxulub impact crater, where an asteroid or meteor struck the Earth approximately 66 million years ago. In addition, a study that looked at mass extinctions across all of time showed that extinctions are not normally caused from impacts from space, but rather they normally have Earth-born causes. Let's hope that we're not going to be the cause of the next extinction. Thanks for watching. There were loads more discoveries that I didn't mention, and each of these that I did mention could obviously be talked about for much longer. If you feel I missed something, you can feel free to comment below or contact me on my Twitter at raptor underscore chatter. Be safe. Take care.